Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for the DailySheeple.com, and this is your news shot. The Wall Street Journal says algorithms have a mind of their own now. How do we ensure, they ask, that artificial intelligence is accountable? Hmm. This is, again, something that I think we need to really deal with because uh, we're seeing this implemented faster and faster as each year goes by. Um, new cutting-edge technology is really, really sapping into humanity's ability to, um, well, live the way that we've currently been living. There's going to be, or going to have to be, some major changes made if things keep going the way that they're going because you will no longer be able to kick this can down the road. It says everyone wants to know, will artificial intelligence do mankind or save the world? But this is the wrong question. In the near future, the biggest challenge to human control and acceptance of artificial intelligence is the technology's complexity and opacity. Not that it's potential to turn all of us into Hal uh, against us like Hal 2001. You know, this black box problem arises from the trait that makes artificial intelligence so powerful. Its ability to learn and improve from experience without explicit instruction. Machine learning through artificial neural networks that work like human brains um, and that's basically what it is. It shares resources. Uh, AI is, a, uh, again, an unbelievable advance in computing. And then you take a look at uh, some of the cutting-edge computing or machines that uh, can run these complex algorithms, things like quantum computers now. Quantum computers can run these complex algorithms fairly simply against your traditional computer, Um and then, of course, you've got uh, limitations. In the next, I think it's eight years, we're going to hit the limit of how many, um, how, how I, I guess there's a limit to as sure as algorithm or something like that. Basically, it's, um, you can only put so many transistors on a chip or so. And it's going to, we're going to reach our max in eight years. Top it out. The only way forward is going to be utilizing this quantum computer or quantum computing. And that's going to take things to an unbelievable uh, level only because of, you know, encryption now going to be uh, much more complex. Your standard com uh, encryption can be cracked very simply with a quantum computer. You start talking about quantum encryption and you're talking about something that's virtually uncrackable. Um, when you look at things like running complex algorithms, like I said earlier, uh, especially dealing with things like the NSA. Let me give you an example. NSA over at Buffdale, Utah, has enough hardware to store every communication on the face of planet Earth for the next 100 years as it currently stands right now. And they have these complex AI algorithms that are run that can go ahead and sniff out every single communication that you've made, any sort of data that gets piped there, whether it be traffic camera data with your license plate on it that it can pick out to determine that you were here at a certain time. They basically know where you are, what you're doing, what you're buying, what you're saying, all of that, and this AI can go and timeline it out so that they can see exactly, just rebuild your life. And then the interesting thing about that is they can cut and paste. And they can cut and paste in such a fashion that can make anybody a patsy. You take a look at some of the people today that have been blamed for terrorist attacks and always have maintained their innocence. You wonder... Are they manufactured by the FBI, by these clandestine organizations, by the NSA to advance agendas? Is it, very, is it possible in this day and age? I think it is. I think it is. We have to be very careful of how this stuff is being deployed, specifically against us. You know, I look at it as um, a lot of Americans... A lot of people in the world have um, that disorder where you fall in love with your jailer. 
Stockholm Syndrome. Because here we have, you know, we have to pay taxes under duress. A lot of people don't. They always say, well, you know, we got to pay our fair share. Got to have taxes. So some people willingly pay it. A lot of us pay them under duress, you know. And then others will say, well, you know, you pay for these services. You might as well take advantage of them. No, I made those payments under duress. I'm not going to go ahead and become a slave to the system because I have to pay taxes. You just, you can't. You have to draw the line and say, no, I'm not going to participate. These, this technology, as we go forward, is going to tighten that noose ever further, tighten the amount of control that they can wield over your life. And it will be deployed first before it's deployed elsewhere, like into McDonald's and into other places to take jobs, even though it's already being done in certain professions, you know, like, for example, your administrative assistant. Now you have um, Siri and everybody else. You may not need that anymore. So you're starting to see these AI type systems come and take over certain jobs very limited right now, but within the next five years, you're going to see a massive push over to AI, especially in the banking and investment sector. And that's going to be an unbelievable damaging thing to um, a lot of people because that's where a lot of the taxes come from. You know, these people make millions of dollars each year. So those that do pay a lot of taxes and typically come from Wall Street. They do and they don't, you know? So we can see AI is already not off to a good start. And can it do some very wonderful things? Absolutely. But it's those that will deploy it for their own self-interest and to maintain control that we should be most concerned about. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeble.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.